All right. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, today's open webinar. I'm John O'Malley from uh, Positive Sun Health Informatics, here with Chris Wood of the Association of State and Territorial Dental Directors. And we're going to kick uh, today off with a short little video. The Data Stories webinar series covers many topics related to oral health data and has been developed as a learning opportunity for open organizations and members to find and successfully use data to inform efforts in advancing oral health equity. The data network response team at OPEN recognized that our members have a wide range of content expertise and want to learn more about using data in their local context. In response to that need, the Data Stories series was created to share innovations and solutions that are happening around the country that can help us to realize our collective vision more effectively and efficiently. We are excited to share this resource and look forward to an open and engaging dialogue that will continue after these stories are presented. Thank you for joining us. Uh, everyone. Uh, we're going to do, uh, give a presentation today on uh, the launch of the National Oral Health Data Portal, which uh, some of you may have been on uh, last week. Uh, okay, uh, so we want to uh, give you a little background on the National Oral Health Data Portal project, with, which Chris and I have been working on for about two years and launched last week. Uh, and so we think, we hope some of you may have had a chance uh, to visit the website. We'll jump into today um, how it's set up, how it's structured, and give a little demo of how we think it could be a valuable tool for, uh, for folks in the open network. I think Chris is gonna start us off with a little background on how the project came to be. Thank you, John. Um, yes, many years ago, I'm gonna say maybe 10, um, there was a federal uh, agency that had a website that showed all of the indicators that are included in the National Oral Health Surveillance System. Those are 36 indicators, and they were indicators that have been vetted, reviewed, approved by the Council of State and Territorial Epidemiologists, the Association of State and Territorial Dental Directors, and the CDC. But a number of years ago, the website that hosted that was revamped, and due to a number of reasons, they ended up eliminating um, the data for the majority of the indicators on the website. And ever since then, I've been frustrated that there was no one location where you could go and, and look at all the data for the indicators for any one state or all the data for all the states for any one indicator. So I kind of had a dream that one of these days I'd like to bring that back. And it was about two years ago, and it was actually through OPEN that I started seeing these uh, requests coming in from the, a young man, John O'Malley, and he was asking for all different kinds of information about data. And finally, one day, he and I got on the phone together, and I asked him what he was looking for all of this for. And he told me that he had a vision to create a central repository for oral health data, one place where you could look at multitude um, a multitude of different data sets. And I was so excited because John was actually taking the vision that I had even one step further. He wasn't going to limit it to just the National Oral Health Surveillance System indicators. He had a vision that was much larger than that. So we teamed up together and we were successful in getting some funding that has allowed us to actually bring this uh, dream to life and we actually just launched it uh, about a week ago this year. And John is gonna tell you all about it now. All right, thanks, Chris. Okay. Uh, so uh, the, the portal is up right now. Anyone could go visit nationaloralhealthdataportal.net right now and you'll see, you'll see a webpage that um, has a couple options on it. And we'll go through, we'll, we'll show you how the website works a little bit. Um, the website is designed to take you to the places you might be looking for. It might take you to visualizations of public oral health data. It might take you to the, uh, the steward of the data. If you're looking for a particularly CDC data set, it, um, you could, 
it could take you to the website of the CDC website that is inf more information on that data set. So maybe you could grab the primary source directly, uh, or maybe uh, the National Health Data Portal will take you to um, our uh, GitHub repository, which is like where all the nerd, uh, all the details, the background, the project, uh, the code that created the data sets, all that um, is there. So there's there's like three pillars to this whole data portal, uh, and you could spend your time in, in each of the three of them. So you can go to the website itself, or you could uh, join our, uh, go into our Tableau public page, and I will show you what that looks like, where all the visualizations are. Uh, most of the work in the portal is our uh, Tableau workbooks. So I think most people will be interacting with those, uh, extracting data from the, work, the Tableau workbooks. But then also we'll show you, there is this uh, GitHub repository. Uh, for those not familiar, GitHub is a collaborative coding platform where you can share files, uh, host a lot of things uh, free and publicly. Uh, so other people can go in there and uh, learn about how what um, the files are, what the code is, and uh, collaboratively contribute to projects like this. So if, if you're of the mindset of uh, you'd like to see some of the code that created the, pro the, the site, I'm uh, happy to check that out and uh, join in. Uh, the nationaloraldataportal.net website looks like this. If you were to type in that URL, it would take you uh, to a site that looks like this. We're just looking at a static page at the moment. Uh, and it's geared around get, sending you to you know, like one of two places, either the data sets page on the right or the surveillance and tools page on the left. The data sets is designed, you'll see a bunch of tiles that are geared ex just exclusively around the separate oral health data sets that are in the portal. We'll show you some of them. And then the surveillance and tools are where you could see um, multiple data sets grouped together. So take like your healthy people objectives, which have measures from many different data sets that would be under there, or uh, national oral health surveillance system in indicators, since those come from many, many different data sets. Those would also be under surveillance and tools. So you kind of have like the aggregated data sets on the left and then the individual data sets on the right. Uh, so if you were to click on that data set uh, tab, it would take you to a page that looks like this. With lots of tiles, you can scroll down on the page itself and see all these, these data sets that I think many folks will be familiar with on this webinar. Um, and so the idea is there are kind of three things that you can do to interact with each of these tiles. You can go to the GitHub repository, which is like the background in all the data sets uh, and downloads, like direct downloads of the data sets themselves. Uh, the Tableau page, which is a, a visualization, so you can kind of interact with and see uh, very easily what the data is and what it, what it means. And then um, the like, World Wide Web logo would take you to the data steward themselves, directly to where the data set come from originally, or more information about the data set from um, usually the federal agency who um, owns the data set. Um, and just a reminder, this is all built on public oral health data sets right now. So. Uh, almost everything was, we were able to obtain without any sort of data use agreement because it's posted online free and publicly. In certain cases, what you're seeing uh, is only available through a data use agreement. But in that case, you're seeing the data aggregated and you're not seeing the raw data in here. Uh, so what we want to do is give you a little demo of uh, how you might use a data set that I think the open network would be particularly interested in. Uh, we, let's, let's use this one. So just change which screen we're sharing. Okay, so I believe we're seeing uh, the National Oral Health Data Portal. That can you give me a nod, Chris, if that's what we're seeing? Great. Okay, so this is the website, the live site, and if we were to go over to data sets, uh, we're going to look for one that. Uh, oh yeah, so I thought Open might would like to see a data set that has lots of different population stratifications, so we can kind of look at things from more of an equity lens. We launched this with a webinar last week. We looked at CMS 416. Uh, so you could do that. You could also do that. There's many data sets in here. So National Survey of Children's Health uh, is just like has a wealth of information there. Um, if you were to take, click this World Wide Web logo, it would take you to childhealthdata.org, which is a great website that you can, can extract data from there. If you were to click on the GitHub logo, it would take you to kind of a background detail page about about the data, learn about the data set, learn what we did with the data set, how we uh, obtained it, what we did um, to get it into Tableau. And then of course there's the Tableau logo, which we're gonna click on here. Okay. Uh, so this is gonna take you directly to the Tableau public visualization of the data set as we presented it. 
but I want you to know that you don't have to come to it this way. You could also go to the Tableau Public Profile, uh, Tableau Public Profile for ASTDB. So if you were to come here, you'd see all these, all the data sets, all the, all the workbooks here, just like a long, long list of them. Um, so you could come to it this way and click on the one that you wanted. But uh, we're going to just continue with our uh, presentation over here. So this is how most of the, you know, most of the uh, data visualizations will look once you click on them. You'll have uh, a kind of a launch page because there's, there's just so many ways to visualize information. This is one of the ways uh, that we're, we're like allowed, having, um, presenting it to folks. So in most of them, you're going to have an orientation page at the top. So if we were to click on this, then um, it would take you to kind of like a slide deck almost that would kind of give people background on the data set. We've had, when we uh, like beta tested this with a lot of our partners, we got feedback that there was just, uh, um, people wanted to, people were concerned that users might like misunderstand or misinterpret some of the information in the workbook because there's so many caveats to lots of the data sets. So uh, we added this little orientation page that we suggest users go through to kind of get them up to speed uh, and be aware, like just know what things they should look out for uh, and how to interpret what they're seeing in the other workbooks. Um, so once you go through the orientation slide deck, uh, there's lots of different workbooks that you could check out. We're going to start with state details. So in this workbook, well, let's, let's, first of all, let's go full screen here. Okay. So the default here is state, uh, set to the state of Alabama. So we're seeing information uh, pertaining to Alabama for the years 2017, 2018. Uh, we're seeing information on the percent of people who had a dental visit. There's lots of questions in here though. There's lots of different measures that we could examine. And we're specifically looking at uh, no dental visits, although you could you could flip it to look at the opposite, like people who had a dental visit. But here we're looking at percent with no dental visit. Uh, you could turn the confidence intervals on or off. I would recommend keeping them on. And you could show a comparison of the United States uh, overall if you wanted to or not. So we can turn that on here. So there's lots to scroll through, but what I love about the National Survey of Children's Health is that there are just like so many population stratifications that it offers. Um, so if you want to look at just like comparisons of percent of uh, folks uh, reporting that they had a dental visit by all these like different characteristics you could. So uh, adverse childhood experiences, uh, children with special needs, um, by age, we always, age is a really important one. So we could see here that children one to five year olds, uh, one to five, here um, have um, higher rates of reporting no dental visit than folks who are older. And we have the confidence intervals to show that that looks like a pretty significant difference. Although we, we're not giving you p-values here, you can see from this that those are pretty different from each other. It's a pretty big jump. Um, however, you can see above here whether or not adverse childhood experiences have a difference. You can see that these look pretty much I would not be able to say from this chart that there is a, like a difference between the two. So that's something that you would see in the orientation page. We would like, kind of give you a little background and um, how to interpret the differences between things by looking at the confidence intervals a little bit. But there's lots of information in here uh, that you could look at for your state to kind of better understand um, just what differences are in all sorts of different oral health measures. You can like click on bleeding gums. Um, we could look at the percent reporting no bleeding gums, or yes, had bleeding gums. Let's say no bleeding gums. Uh, and in this case, um, in most instances, the like percent of people uh, reporting it is very, very high. Uh, so this is just a little background. Like, you know, this, this is pretty much how lots of the visual, visualizations will look when you're in, interacting with them in Tableau. Uh, but we also want to let you know that if you were to click on like the GitHub icon in the, in the bottom corner here, it would take you to uh, directly to the GitHub page related to this data set. So you can kind of, if you have questions about where it came from or would like to replicate the code that created it, you could check that out there. Um, also, uh, want to point out that uh, there are some controls here within uh, Tableau workbooks that allow you to uh, download maybe an image of what you're seeing. So just come down as a JPEG. Uh, there's lots of different formats. Uh, for those who've used Tableau before, 
If you want to download directly from within Tableau, I would not recommend it doing it through this mechanism. That's why we've set up this download data box in the bottom. So this will like, let you choose uh, the format of the data you'd like to download. You could download it as an Excel file. Uh, if I were to do so, it would then take the data you're seeing on the screen. So it would, you would take data points only for Alabama, for these, uh, for, for bleeding gums, um, percent reporting no bleeding gums only, and it would put it into a spreadsheet for you that you could download. So if you don't want like the entire, if you want the entire data set, like the giant, all the data that's going into this, you could find that on our GitHub page. If you just want to download the data set for what you're seeing here in this current screen, um, you could use that download box there. Uh, so that's, I think, a good overview of, of how to interact with lots of these. There's many, many, many uh, visualizations here. And we encourage you to check out our website and visit uh, our Tableau public page or uh, to join us in the GitHub uh, repository to see lots of what's going on behind the scenes. So I'm going to hop back to our slide deck here. And uh, I think like transition to a little bit of a, like a discussion and Q&A uh, because uh, uh, we were tasked, uh, I think, with describing a little bit of like what the process was like for developing uh, the portal and how we took like health equity into consideration. And I think uh, there's a bunch that we'd love to say about this. So Chris, you hop in um, to help me out um, as you have feelings uh, or, or thoughts on it. But uh, the reason I showed the National Survey of Children's Health data set because it's because it's like one of the most detailed uh, data sets with lots of different population stratifications. And I think it gives one of the best ways of comparing uh, oral health outcomes and access disparities. And there's many data sets that are, that are good like that, although not all of them are. So I think uh, when Chris and I like embarked on this project, we, we wanted to get as detailed as possible in all of these. So, uh, if it was possible for us to get data by population group, we always went for it and tried um, to calculate it. Uh, but unfortunately, it's like not always available in some of them. So uh, this project is built on like whatever we can get. Um, if it's a public data set that we can grab, we're going to include it to the best that we can. Um, and so as public data sets get better and better and more detailed, we'll incorporate those in the future because this is a living and breathing portal that will keep changing as more data becomes available. Um, Chris, do you have anything to add about like other perspectives on, on the project? No, I, I've answered a couple of the chat questions. One is that we are planning to produce some tutorials on, on how to best navigate it. Oh. Um, and then I think the important thing is that, you know, we are not doing any primary data collection. We are simply trying to make data that is collected uh, easily accessible and understandable um, for people who who would like to look at the data. So the question about zip code, um, there are data sets that do get quite granular and um, John has some has built in some capability to do some mapping. Um, but if if a primary data set doesn't collect or report their data in that, at that level of granularity, then there's no way for us to do it, so. And we do, we do encourage, uh, ASTDD does, when we work with states who are doing data collection, we really make it a, a, a standard, a best practice that, that they do collect um, race, ethnicity, gender, uh, socioeconomic uh, information, and that they report their data that way. So we, we try to get all states to do that, um, but many of these are, are national debt data sets and the states are not collecting it themselves. A, a, a great data set to bring up, I think, is the, the basic screening survey for third graders that I think many folks will be familiar with. So there's a data set that like there's guidance that ASTDD has on how to conduct the surveys, but the states do the surveys themselves and then produce the data in like different formats, like usually a PDF that they'll kind of launch uh, and they'll collect different population groups, but those populations may not be standardized state to state. So 
one state may collect race ethnicity a certain way, another state may collect it a different way. Uh, so you'll see in the data portal, if you go to the data set as we presented it, uh, we've, we're presenting it as the states uh, presented in their, in their documents, um, rather than try to, to, to play with it too much. We're kind of taking it as it is. That makes it a little difficult to compare state to state sometimes because of how different they can be. I think for example, a good example is Hawaii. Hawaii had, is very multicultural and it was really important for them to collect and report their data in a very, uh, in a, a much more, what would be the word? Uh, uh, they, they didn't lump like Asian Americans together or, or uh, mm -hmm. Pacific Islanders. They, they asked for and they collected their data getting very granular in terms of, of uh, race ethnicity. So. And some states will show, give you even county level data with the with stuff, uh, with the basic string survey. Uh, some states will present the state as a whole. It kind of depends on like what kind of statistical power you can get, probably with the amount of funding that you have. And so, but, but we always go for the most detailed data that we can. Um, other, we'll invite other questions that can come in through the chat. Yeah, our folks can take themselves off mute too, I believe, if, if you want to ask questions and have a little conversation. Yeah, sometimes it's easier to ask your questions than to try and yeah. type them in a chat box. <laughs> So I have a question for you guys. Hi, um, I'm just considering like this tool is amazing. I know it's taken a long time to build and there's a lot of nuances with it. Um, I'm looking forward to having some tutorials and to be diving into it myself. But um, I know like between ASTDD and Open and a lot of our additional partners, we have a strong uh, membership, right? Of people that are trying to advance oral health equity all across the country. So in developing this tool, like what were, what were your biggest hopes for the impact of this tool and how folks might be able to, to use it and work together? And where do you, like, what do you see the future of this tool? I, I see it as having really a, a broad audience. Um, I'm hoping that policymakers will use it to, to guide them when they're developing policy. I hope that people who are developing funding opportunity announcements look at it so that they can tailor their funding opportunity announcements to um, the, the populations that are most in need. Um, it's definitely something that can be used for program planning. Um, and it's very much something that a state could use for evaluation too, comparing your own progress over the years to how, how are other states doing. So um, I, 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 it's not a website that I think the general public will go to. Um, but it is definitely something that, as I say, I think administrators, uh, people who run programs, people who write grants, and people who make policy will find this very useful. I'd, I'd have to echo the same. Uh, we're, we're trying, like, if you're looking for oral health data, even if you're an epidemiologist, biostatistician, who likes to get really in the weeds, I think there's a lot, will be a lot of value to this project and you probably wanna spend a lot of time on the GitHub repository, learning about what we did in the background. Um, or if that's like, you know, confidence intervals are not your jam, I think the site will like still be useful for you uh, because really all, almost all the data that went into this, you could just go out there and grab yourself if you wanted to, or if you knew like how to do some of the statistical calculations. Uh, but we're just trying to like, make it so you don't, like everything's in one place. You don't have to go searching for it. You don't have to go to the listservs and ask for help to find something. It should be pretty easy to find. Um, I, I could have given a better demo on the website. On, if you're looking for a data set, you're not even sure which data set's appropriate. 
you can search for it. There's filters we have. If you're looking for a children's data set, just type in children's and you know, it'll filter down to what, what would help you there. If you're looking for a state level data set with adults with special needs, like there's uh, some data that can help you with that too. So, uh, and, and John, maybe talk a little bit about that we've got some, some new, some other data sets that, you, that we're going to be adding and then also kind of what your aspirations are. I know that you are really wanting to get information about diagnosis codes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris is bringing up what my like entire PhD uh, is designed around, which is, uh, so for, for example, I'm uh, at the University of Michigan right now in the program in health infrastructures and learning systems and scientific computing. And it's like my long-term interest is in collecting diagnosis codes at the clinical level that we could aggregate up the system to find like actual, like do population health analysis based on what has been diagnosed in the mouth. So that's like my personal interest in things. And I think that's a long way away from, from happening, but someday you can imagine downloading a data set like that from CMS along with the, like the CMS 416 data. Uh, but stuff we're working on here, like in the next like, year or so uh, with the data portal, I, I don't wanna give up too much, too much away as we work with our partners, but uh, you'll be seeing a lot more about emergency room data soon. Um, so you'll be able to drill in for most states, I believe, to see what's going on with emergency room utilization for non-traumatic dental conditions. And I think that will be a really good one. Uh, and we're hoping to soon have uh, dental insurance uh, rates and dental visit rates with a different data set in here too. Uh, so we have like a lot that we're planning to, to add over the next year, especially. And we just hope it keeps evolving as more data becomes available. Uh, I, I do want to mention, of course, uh, that we're very thankful for the funding that we have uh, from Delta Dental of Michigan and from GlaxoSmithKline. Uh, without them, we wouldn't be able to put this up um, as it is. And uh, so we are looking forward in the future to continue to grow the project. And I think we'll always be looking for funding to help with projects like that. Um, there was a question from Francis about does the, or Kate, excuse me, about do the data get updated automatically? And John, I'll let you answer sure. that. Actually, this question comes up a lot. It's a very manual process right now uh, because most of the data is just, you have to click to download it from a website and they come out at irregular time intervals, most often every year. Most often it's like an annual download. Uh, it's not that bad as it sounds, I think. So take the CMS 416 data set. Thankfully, CMS has the data set in the same exact format every year. So I have, you'll see on, on GitHub, I have code that can, once it's downloaded, it can just like, aggregate everything back up. So when the new data set comes out, it'll probably take me less than an hour to have it all repackaged and back in the Tableau. So like the effort's pretty low because we already have the code written. Uh, but then, yeah, you can imagine a future where all these data sets are like set up by um, APIs, automated programming interfaces. I don't know, like folk, folks are familiar with that. So basically, if it, like the data stewards have like connections that we can log into, um, that we would always be able to pull down the latest data and feed that directly into Tableau. Things are starting to move that direction, and I think that's where you'd see us go in the future. But for the most part, it's manual, um, which is helpful when someone sees that a new data set's available. They They'll email us if we didn't catch it ourselves, and then we'll go out and we'll grab it and put it in. So I will invite everyone to keep us updated on new data as it comes out and let us know. Maybe we'll put it in. I know we're at the half hour, but the one last question was about what gaps did we learn or identify and lessons learned. And I think we challenges are that not every state collects data the same data on the same years. So it is difficult sometimes to compare. Um, we do wish that there were, um, there was more uh, uh, granularity in the data, um, that more of the data sets did report things such as race, ethnicity, you know, gender, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and what we're kind of hoping is that when people see their data and they look at how their data is shown compared to others, it may inspire them to do a better job and a more thorough job in their data collection. So. Um, and there was a last comment about can we sh can you share with colleagues? Yes, share with everyone. Uh, you know, we're happy. And if you'd like for us to give a presentation, uh, reach out to Chris and myself, and maybe we can help you out with that too.
We know it's not so really detailed and we'll have, be having tutorials come out. We know there's just like, it can be overwhelming, but we'll, have, we'll work on that. Yeah, this is a public site, so share it widely and we uh, do welcome suggestions for improvement. So with that, John, shall we wrap up? Sounds, sounds good. Thank you everyone for Here's coming that. on and letting us share our exciting new project. Thank you guys so much.